Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about 10 books that have the I hate everyone in the world but you trope. Baby, baby. If you didn't know about this trope, it is very, very popular on TikTok. People recommend these books all the time and people love these books. I love these books. So these are 10 books that you can read that have the I hate everyone in the world, but you trope in them. All of these are really, really good and I highly recommend. So please check them out if you haven't yet. First we have It Ain't Me Babe by Tilly Cole. This is a motorcycle club romance. This one has a lot of trigger warnings, so please check out the trigger warnings before you deep dive into this one. This book is about Styx and Salome. Salome ended up growing up in a cult. Um, and so there's a lot of trauma she faces as a kid. When she's a kid, she um, is crying in front of the fence at the end of the cult's property. And she ends up meeting Styx, who is walking the woods one day with his father. His father is the uh, leader of the motorcycle club. Um, and so Styx ends up coming across the heroine. They're both like pretty young at this point. And um, he like sits with her in front of this fence and he's wondering why she's crying. They end up end up being like split up after that. And like nobody knows that they saw each other, but they've always thought about each other since then. Our hero in here sticks. He's actually, um, I think mute, right? He has a stutter. Yes, he has a stutter. I was thinking if, I was wondering if he was deaf or not. He's not, he can hear, he has a stutter. And because he has a stutter, he is very, um, embarrassed to talk and so he uses sign. It's years later, Salome ends up escaping her cult one night and she ends up passing out, bleeding in the alley behind his motorcycle club. He ends up finding her and realizes who she is and is like, oh my gosh, this woman is who was behind that fence. Oh my gosh. They like obviously like reconnect and um, start to fall for one another and he is very gruff quite like rude to other people but when it comes to Salome oh my gosh he will do anything for her anything they both fall hard for one another and um there's just some conflict here and so like this book gets dark at points but it it is so good I love it next is The Beast by Katie Robert this is book number four a part of the Wicked Villain series this is a series all made up of fairy tale retellings, more specifically like Disney tales to where one of the good guys in the movie gets with the villain of the movie, or in this case, the hero and the villain in this book. This is an MMF romance. So this is a romance between the characters who are inspirations of Belle, Gaston, and Beast. The hero in here that hates everyone in the world but you is Beast. You get to see him in the previous books as well. I really recommend reading this series in order. You get more out of it. You get to see Beast in the previous books, but he is quite standoffish, gruff, kind of scary at points. People are pretty scared of him, but he would do anything for these two characters in here, y'all. So this book is about Isabel and her father was the leader of their town sector. This, this books are about like people owning different sectors of this land. So her dad was the leader of the sector. He ends up dying. And um, before that point though, before her father died, Gayton and Beast were people who worked in her household who were kind of like bodyguards. Isabel ends up forming a relationship with each of them separately. She falls for both of them separately and they both know about the other person, but it comes to a point where they're like, choose one of us or you'll get neither of us. And so she can't choose. And so they both leave the household. A little while later, maybe a year or two later, I'm not sure, um, but she ends up coming to the club that they work at now. They work at this club or they go to this club and she ends up like telling them like hey can you come back to our property our house help because my father just died and my sister now is in control and she needs some protection and they're like okay we'll come back to the house if uh you are with us for i think like a week or two i don't remember the time frame and you're with us and we'll do whatever like we say to do with you and by the end of it you have to pick one of us to be with and she's like this is the only way i can get them to be in my house and i love both of them so much and I guess I'm just gonna have to pick one of them even though she doesn't want to. And so then they have this uh, relationship together for this very short amount of time and throughout all of this they start to realize like what if they could all three be together? Um, <laughs> it's quite taboo in some sense. It's quite steamy y'all. These books are so well written and the scenes are just like so good. Beast is definitely the one that would that hates like basically everyone but these two people he even hates Gaten at the beginning of this book he hates well he hates both of them because of what Isabel did but through all of this you see him be like you know what I love these two and so 
That was so cute to read about. Next I have Transcendence by Shay Savage. This is a time travel caveman romance all in the point of view of the caveman. And in this book, like at the beginning, the uh, author like puts, puts a note in there about how like the hero in here, Ed, he um, is a caveman and they did not understand language at that point. He's never gonna learn language in this book, so don't expect it. But he would tear apart the world for this heroine. And oh, would he, would he, would he? So this is about Ed and Beth or Beth. Um, he can't say Beth, he says Beth. Um, and so he comes across Beth um, in the woods one day. He is a caveman. This is years, 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 years in the past. And it turns out like she ended up getting sucked back in time and she is stuck here. And he takes it upon himself to uh, take care of this woman and for her to be his mate and for him to love and cherish her. And he protects her with everything in his body. He loves her with everything in his body. And like, she's trying to like, come to terms with like, I'm in a different time, what is going on? Who is this man? And then she starts to like fall in love with him, um, even though he can't understand her most of the time. But there's like a particular scene where they come across a different caveman and goes after him because this guy is trying to like take his woman and he's like, no, no. <laughs> and so he definitely like only really cares about Beth. He doesn't care about anything else but her. Next is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Oh, this book is so good, y'all. This book has mute representation in it. Our hero Archer in here is mute. He is also known as the town recluse. He doesn't really like people. He likes to be away from people. He only likes to be at home. I think with his dog. He has a dog. I think. I don't remember. Either the hero or the heroine has a dog. But this is about also Brie and she ends up moving into the small town and she runs into Archer one day because he's mute and he can't talk to other people. People basically outcast him in this town. She wants nothing of that. She wants to befriend him. She becomes friends with him. He is very hesitant to become her friend because he's been um, basically bashed so many times in the past by people. But he slowly learns that she really cares about him. They both know how to sign with one another. So he finally has someone he can communicate with. And so he just wants to be with her. He doesn't want to be involved with the town at all. So he he only wants Brie. He doesn't want anybody else. He doesn't want to be involved with anyone else. He, he hates the whole world except for her. He just wants to be in their house alone together. This guy is also pretty innocent and naive about the world. So there's that to it. I just love how both of these characters fully embraced and loved one another. Then I have Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. Now, at the beginning of this book, the hero doesn't like the heroine, but then he slowly starts to be like, I hate everyone in the world but you. But at the beginning, he also hates her. <laughs> this is the third book, a part of the Brown Sisters series by Talia Hibbert. I adore this series. I really recommend you reading them in order. You don't have to by any means. Like it barely involves the other books like at all but you get so much more out of it if you read the other two this is about eve who is the youngest brown sister and she is known as kind of like a um what's the word trust fund baby she's a trust fund baby she's been living off her family's like trust fund for forever because her family is quite rich but she's very uh flighty when it comes to jobs and everything and she still is at home at this point and so her parents like sit her down basically have an intervention with her and it's like hey uh, you need to find a steady paying job for like a year, I think. And then until that point, we're like cutting off your trust fund, you know, you need to go find your way in the world. Um, and so she decides to go drive around after that conversation, basically to cool off. And she comes across this bed and breakfast that has a help wanted sign and they're looking for a chef. And so she just is like, let's just go in, let's see what happens. And so she goes in without a resume and like with no um preparation at all there she ends up meeting the owner of the bed and breakfast whose name is jacob and jacob doesn't like a lot of people he only really likes i think his aunt and his best friend and that's it <laughs> he is very prickly and right when eve walks into the room he does not like her because uh, she has a very strange looking hair she is not put together in her clothing and she didn't even bring a resume and so he's like she's not put together at all no um but then like some circumstances happen to where he ends up hiring her as his chef um and they end up having to be in a forced proximity with one, with one another because she lives in one of his rooms that's in the bed and breakfast and like eve slowly starts to like grow on him this is very grubby sunshine he's the grump she's the sunshine he despises like basically everyone he doesn't really like people but then like he slowly starts to like fall for eve and then like realize like eve is my person like i can't tell eve anything it's kind of like a hate to friends than to lovers. He only has eyes for Eve. He loves Eve. I love the transition there from I hate you, I despise you, to 
oh, I can really open up to this person and I feel like they could be a great person in my life too. I am in love with this woman with every fiber of my being. It was beautiful. This is my favorite book of the year so far. So I love this one so much. Next is Full Tilt by Emma Scott. In this case, it's kind of like the heroine in here is the I hate everyone but you. This is about Casey and she's an up and coming, fairly popular rock star singer, a part of this rock band. Um, and she's basically almost hit rock bottom. Her family has isolated her because of some choices that she made in her past. And she's very much down in the dumps and trigger warning for substance abuse. Uh, she gets drunk, like smashing drunk almost every single night. This is about her romance between her limo driver and her. Uh, Jonah is her limo driver for the night at the beginning of this book. One of the bodyguards end up putting her in the limo to take her home because she is smashed out of her mind. And he goes to take her home, but the door is locked. There's nobody there to open the door door her phone is dead like he can't call anybody and so he's like well I don't want to leave her on the store step and something happened to her so I'm gonna take her home and let her sleep on my couch so they do just that and she wakes up in the morning and she's like what is going on she doesn't know what's going on she didn't know what happened she apologizes obviously for what happened she just goes through like a change in here she's very prickly sarcastic standoffish person she doesn't let anybody in really and then she meets like Jonah, like Jonah like changes everything for her. She becomes an entirely new person. She becomes the person she is meant to be and that the person she wants to be. And that may or may not include like being with him instead of living out her rock star dreams. And those rock star dreams may or may not have like perpetuated her to live this unhealthy life. And Jonah helps her realize this. Like he becomes her person, like her person in all senses of the word. This book is been freaking tastic. It's one of the best books I think ever written. It's a duology. The duology, you need to read the second one if you haven't yet. They come together, like like the, the books, like they are a package deal. And if you don't read them together, what are you doing with your life? I did that. I only read book one. Book one wrecked me. And so I was like, I don't know if I want to read book two, but then Brie from My Love and Words, like she was like, you have to read book two. So we buddy read it together. She reread it and I read it for the first time. And Oh my gosh, she's right. Book number two is amazing as well. Um, please read book two if you haven't yet. Then we have A Girl Like Her by Tally Hibbert. This one again is the heroine who is like, I hate everyone in the world but you. This is a neighbor's romance. <laughs> this is about Ruth and Evan. Um, Evan just recently moved next door to Ruth. Ruth is a shut-in. Um, I think she might be agoraphobic. I don't remember. Or maybe she just likes to be at home. Who knows? I like to just be at home. I can't remember at the moment if she is agoraphobic or not, but she is autistic. She has autism. And so something kind of happened in the town uh, years ago to where Ruth was kind of like an outcast. Um, and you get, in, you read in the book why. And so she basically stays in her apartment all day long. Um, and she works from home. I believe she makes comics. Uh, she's a comic book nerd. Um, she hates everybody except like, kind of she, she kind of tolerates her sister she loves her sister but like she would not really spend all much time with her she doesn't really like anybody and then evan comes and knocks on her door one day with like a casserole or something and like he loves to cook and so he's like hey neighbor i made you something here you go and she's like who are you why are you at my door i want to be alone and so evan kind of like puts it on himself to like strike up a deal with um Ruth and he's like okay I'll cook with you and I'll like I want to get to know you so I'll cook a bunch of meals for you if I can like eat them with you in your apartment and you can tell me all about comic books and she's like okay she's very reluctant to do so though she's just been burned in the past by guys before and like she doesn't want to go through that again and so she's very prickly and standoffish and she slowly starts to be like I hate everyone in the world but you because once her and Evan like get together like Dude, is she, she taken, <laughs> she's taken. She still has a like a hesitancy to be with other people, but Evan is definitely the exception for her. Next is Her Sweet Alpha by Thayer King. This is a werewolf shifter romance. This is about Dave who is an alpha for an alpha pack. And at this, like in this society, in this world our author has created, um, werewolves were just like outed basically. <laughs> like, um, People know, like humans know that werewolves are a thing now. Werewolves exist. Dade has been looking for his mate for a very long time. Um, so he's eating at this diner one day and he smells her like for the first time ever. And he realizes that it is the waitress who has been serving him and his friends this whole time. And he's like ecstatic, so happy. Um, and he's like, oh my gosh, this is my mate. I am so happy. And the heroine is like, who are you? What are you talking about? She's a human. She's very nervous and scared to be with him because she's kind of petite, a small person. And this dude is giant. <laughs> He's huge. And so she's like, I'm scared. <laughs> and so he tries very slowly to help her realize like this way of life could like be amazing for you. I could be amazing for you. We can be amazing together. And so he's just slowly starting to chip away at her 
but her hesitancy. <laughs> I would say the hero here is the one that's like, I hate everyone in the world but you because like, he doesn't really care about anybody else. Like he cares about his pack, like that's um, his job, you know, as an alpha, um, but he only really cares about the heroine at that point. Once he meets her and he's, he, he's like, I don't care about anything else but you. Like, I only want you. That's it. Next is Chasing Cassandra by Lisa Kleypas. This is book number six, a part of the Ravenel series. I really recommend you reading these books in order because you meet the hero in here, Tom, in the previous books. And I didn't really like Tom, you know? She was kind of prickly and like stirred up the pot in some drama, you know? And I was like, I don't know if I like you. And then I read this book and I was like, I like you. <laughs> so this is about Cassandra and she is a part of the Ravenel family and all of her siblings and all of her friends or people a part of the Ravenel family they have already all been married. And she's like, I want to be married. Like I'm sick of being like the only single person in our family, except for her cousin, her older cousin at this point, like cousins get married, you know? And so she like pulls her cousin into another room and she doesn't like him or love him. She just wants a husband, someone to love her and cherish her to take care of her and have children with. And she's like, can, can we just get married? Yeah, can, can we just get married here? Because like, I don't want to be a spinster. And her cousin is like, no, you need to find love for like love. Like you deserve love. And I don't think about you like that in all honesty. And I don't think we'd be a good pair. And so Tom is sitting in the same room, like he's in the room before they come in. And he like looks at a Cassandra and like is immediately like, smitten with her and like thinks that she is beautiful. And is like, I'll, I'll be your husband, I'll do it. And she's like, who are you? <laughs> And so she says no, because she's like, I don't know who you are. But like Tom is very standoffish and he's, like I said before, prickly. Um, he doesn't play well with others. <laughs> he's been known to not care about other people and to only care about himself and his life. But then he meets Cassandra and he sees her and is like, that woman is gorgeous and beautiful. And she like becomes a fixation for him. And it is just so sworn worthy of how much he cares about her. Even when he claims, like he says he only has like three emotions. He says he only has like, I don't remember them, but one of them is not love. And he tells her for right, like, I can't love you. I don't have that emotion in me. That's why she's mainly hesitant because she's like, I want to find love. I want someone to love me. So that's why she doesn't agree later on to marry him. Um, but then they start to get to know one another and Tom realizes that maybe he can feel love, you know? And Cassandra just falls for him and Tom like, doesn't care about again like many of these heroes doesn't care about anything else but this woman at all he would die for this woman he would do anything for this woman and you get to see him do anything for the woman in this book it is so good but i recommend reading the previous books before this one and last i'm going to be talking about dearest rogue by elizabeth hoyt this is book number eight a part of the maiden lane series i've only read two books in this series shame on me i haven't read them in order this one is just so good i wanted to read it because our heroine phoebe is blind and the hero in here is her bodyguard and he also has a disability he walks with a cane um i believe he was injured in war I don't know what happened. I don't remember what happened, um, but he ended up getting injured and she, he ends up having to walk with a cane now. This is about Lady Phoebe and James Trevelyan. This is very much a grumpy sunshine dynamic as well. Phoebe is the sunshine and James Trevelyan is the grump. He also doesn't like a lot of people. He is kind of like known to be crass and rude to other people, except for Lady Phoebe. Oh my gosh, is he ever so gentle and kind and sweet and head over heels for Lady Phoebe. So he is her bodyguard. Um, she is the sister to a duke. The duke hires James to be her personal bodyguard, basically just to make sure that she can get through society being blind. Phoebe is very hesitant and kind of put off by the, fa by the fact that she has to have this bodyguard with her. Um, but through them spending time together and getting to know one, one another, um, she slowly starts to realize that she may love this man. James is brooding and cursed and there's very much an age gap here as well. And so he's like, she is so young, she deserves someone way younger than me. But then he starts to realize like, no, this woman is mine. She is mine. She's beautiful and amazing and caring and she is mine and I would do anything for her. And I love when Hero does that, when he would literally tear apart the world for a woman and do anything for a woman. And, our, and James does it in this one. So there you have it. Those are 10 books that have the I hate everyone in the world but you trope. I absolutely love this trope. So please let me know down below if you have any recommendations for me. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.